Good morning and welcome to Coon Rapids United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Pastor Diana and it is a joy to have all of you with us today. Today is a fifth Sunday, which makes it a little different. I want to know, did anybody pass the test? Is anyone smarter than a fifth grade Sunday school class? Anybody? I see fifth graders raising their, raising their hands. What in the world? Okay. <laughs> Would you please join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, we believe that you have called us to this place today. We believe that you have gathered us in this place to learn something, to experience something, to worship you, to learn ways that we can live our lives differently in the future for your sake. Gracious God, thank you for all of the amazing work that you are doing here with each of us as a group and in our individual lives. Lord, thank you for this time. Be in every part. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Kayla forward. She's going to share with us some things about this awesome fifth Sunday that we've been cooking up for weeks now. Right, Kayla? What do you got going on today? What are we doing? No, not yet. Nope, we can't hear Kayla. <laughs> My mic's on. The mic's on, but no one's home. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> There's lots of lights on, too. And lots of lights on. So. Okay, you're on. Me? Okay. Whenever there's a fifth Sunday on our calendars, that's a Sunday that we're all going to worship together as family. So I think the next one's in December? Yeah. So in December, on a fifth Sunday, there'll be another one. So today, there's no kids' church. We're all staying together as a family, and we're going to do some really fun things, continuing on with the theme of where have you been and where are you going? Yes. So we're going we're gonna to do this together. You ready for the first song? Okay, so, it, so what that means is that some of us are going to be surprised by things being a little bit different today. And so this is a Sunday to embrace different, enjoy the songs that the kids sing, and have a great time. Next Sunday will be different. Come back and sing different songs next week as well. So we're going to sing the first song? Correct. But All right, I so wanna, Kayla's got some instructions for the first song today. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to sing. You don't have to do the motions. Yeah, Just you do. do what you're comfortable yeah, you with. Some yeah. of us like to get in the aisles and sing. Some of the kids love to jump up and down, dance around. Some of the adults do too. So feel free to, <laughs> to do it however you want. This first song is going to be really lively. So I want to ask if any kids want to come up. I have some different things that we can use to worship with today. I have some, so any kids that want to come up here and dance to that first song, on, and kids. adults, Anybody I shouldn't come say forward? just kids, because I can see Christine coming up and doing come this on, with kids, us. Come on kids, let's go! Yeah, yeah, and Sunny, okay, so, any grown-ups who want to be their, kids right now? Look at streamers, these are cheerleader <laughs> pom-poms, like these are pom-poms, cheerleader pom-poms, we have streamers on a stick, and I have some puppets, these are all some different tools that you kids can use, and grown-ups to worship with today to our first song. Let me know when you have your chosen worship fun thingy. Love seeing grown-ups deciding to be kids today. Are we ready? Are we going to sing, Kayla? Well, I, I just I want to say one more thing once they're wait, ready. Wait. All right, here's what's going to happen. After this first song, we're going to put all the worship tools back, and then we're going to sing the second song. You're going to go back with your families. Are you guys listening? Hey. Hey. If you can hear me, touch your nose. 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 Okay. After this first song, we're going to put everything back, and then we're going to return to our pews and our family. We're going to sing another song together, okay? So this is for our first song. And we can move around wherever you want to be. So let's go. Hey, okay, guys, get ready. Please stand if you will, if you would like to or if you're able to, and join us as we sing, okay? We're all learning together. Let's go. I'm going to do this one. Ready? 
Not marching to the beat of my own drum. I listen up for the rhythm of the risen sun. No telling where to end up without thee. So I listen for the heavenly melody. Drop your stuff in the bucket. And who can help me move this so it's not in the way for the choir? Let's put it on this front pew. Could you help me, Andrew? What do you think? Did you guys enjoy that? Different way for you to worship on Sunday. All right, we are ready for the next song, Dave. Let's put that on the front pew, boys. Thank you.
That's how we memorize scripture at Pathfinders. That's one of our songs this year and one of our memory verses, so every Wednesday night. Um, and we just thought that was beautiful. It changed the way I ever said that term, la di da And so um, now I, I really like that. I enjoy that. I am next going to call up Becky Defoe. Are you ready? To make an announcement for a serving opportunity. I'm back. Okay, so you guys remember October... 13th, right? October 13th, it's next Saturday. We're asking you. What? Oh, yeah, that's not next week. It's in two weeks. Yeah, not next week, two weeks. And we're going to come and we're going to help. And I think we've got lots of people helping in the garden. I just want to make sure we also have some people that will help um, fill holes in the parking lot because we need those filled. We also need lots of help um, up on the roof, um, patching whatever needs to be patched. And um, Hal, are you coming to help? Yeah, I'm coming. Whoop. Kind of hot. <laughs> Hold your shirt. Keep your shirt on, you know. It takes me away to get here. I, I, I'm sorry. I guess you're a lady. You don't take your shirt off. But okay. Now, as you can see, we're on the trustees. Now, some of us guys on the trustees ain't quite as stable as we used to be, so we could use some some muscle and some uh, stability to help us. You don't have to worry about if you don't know how to do something, because we'll gladly take the time to teach you. Uh, it just, you know, to me, it takes me a week to get a day's work done the way I figure it these days. And don't ask my wife, Shirlene, she'd probably tell you it takes a month. <laughs> but we could use your help. We try to make things easy. So come on down. Help us where you can. And, you know... It's getting so it's kind of hard to find them sky hooks these days, so we could use your help on the ladders and stuff. I love it. Uh, yeah. What else we got? I think that's all. <laughs> that's all we got? That's all we got. Okay. Well, she's going to tell you where to sign up. Okay. And I think we got almost a full page, but there's, another, but there's, there's a, a second page, page underneath it, it so, so don't worry about it. Wouldn't it be great the if more we the merrier. two pages? Two pages. So there's a sign up right there at the welcome desk. If the first page is full, <laughs> if the first page is full, make sure you flip it over and sign on the second page. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. So Everybody take a look. Uh, many opportunities to serve in your bulletin. There's a need for greeters. There is um, need at Mississippi Elementary and Sheridan Story. We have a new membership class coming up, two Sundays in a row for a new membership class. The daycare here at church is looking for part-time help. Bells and chimes are looking for more people to play. There's a nursing home service coming up that you can participate in. What day is that? The 14th. Uh, Feed My Starving Children has a sign up in the bulletin board. Faithlings class today, their theme is, is it listed? It's about a trip that Somebody about a trip to Palestine, that's at Faith Education Time. In the gym, Scout Wreath Sales today for the Scouts starts in the gym. Go check them out, pick up your orders for your wreaths. And a big thing that's changed here is there's a bulletin deadline change. It used to be like Thursdays at noon. Now you have to have anything you want in the bulletin to the church office by 8 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. So send all articles into the office to Kathy, and the newsletter deadline is October 15th. Okay, so that's a big change for everybody. And now I would like to invite up the choir. They are going to sing from the day during the offering.
for a doxology. You're okay, don't worry, just sing. <laughs> yeah, it's different today. Actually, you guys can walk and sing it, okay? Don't worry. You can walk and sing it. You can sing it for a while, okay? Gracious and holy God, you have given us so much. You are so generous and so good to us, Lord. We ask that you take all of who we are, all of our time, our energy, our ideas, all of our interactions, our conversations, all of our gifts, Lord, and teach us how to use all of these things for the work of your kingdom that you may be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen? amen. You may be seated. Isn't that a beautiful way to sing the doxology this morning? 
Absolutely beautiful. This morning, as we turn to our Lord in prayer, I would ask that you find the gray insert in your bulletin. There are some prayer names listed there. Continuing prayers for several in our church family, several who have experienced many medical concerns and new diagnoses recently. And also, I received a few cards just now. Prayers of thanks for Michael Olson's 20th 25th birthday today. Happy birthday, Michael. And Vonda is asking prayers of thanks for all people in transition, especially refugees and asylum seekers. Thanking God for children and adults and opportunities to give thanks. And Marcus is asking for prayers for a friend named Tony who has shoulder surgery on Wednesday. I would also like to offer a prayer of thanks for everyone who made my time away these last 10 days. So easy and so wonderful. I'll tell you more about what I've been doing these last 10 days in a little bit here. So would you please join me in prayer? Gracious God, your loving kindness follows us and fills us and enlightens us everywhere we go, Lord, in the singing of children, in the dancing with flags, in the joy that we experience when we see people connect with Christ. Lord, you give us opportunities to be a part of those connections. You give us chances to share your love, your grace, and your mercy all of the time. When we get to be a part, Lord, of your kingdom work, there is nothing more fulfilling, nothing better, nothing worth more living for. Gracious God, for all that you do with us and for us, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to teach us and train us how to be your people, how to be true disciples of Jesus Christ that are compelled by that great commission to seek the lost, to seek the lonely, to comfort the afflicted, to share your love, your mercy, your grace with all those in need that they may come to know you and to serve you alongside. Lord, we ask these things for our church family, that you would train us and teach us as a body to become the body of Christ that you need right here in this community, to see the people we need to see that you are searching for. Lord, train us and teach us even now as we pray together in unity the words that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, how's everybody doing today? You all right? Did those songs freak you out a little bit, or are you all right? Everybody okay? I think they're kind of fun, don't you? I just wish I knew them better. I need to go to kids' church. What do you think? Next Sunday, maybe I could cut the sermon and go to kids' church. How would that be? Oh, wait, no, not me. Okay, that's right. Well, this morning we have a beautiful young person coming to share our scripture lesson today. I believe that's Annabelle. Where is Annabelle? Annabelle, would you please come and share our scripture lesson with us today? I think I have slides for it. Hang on just a second. Yeah, but I don't, yeah. We're from the same version, so you'll be all right. Let's see if my clicker will let me change them. Hey, Dave. Hey, there we are. Okay, let's be sure we can hear you, though. Okay. 
Okay, so the first one I'm going to read is from Ephesians 2.10, and it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 3.9, and it says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field and God's buildings. Thank you, Annabelle. May God add his blessings to the reading of this word today. So we've been thinking a lot about this concept and this idea for quite a while now. Where on earth have you been? And where might God want to lead you next? And one of the most thrilling things about pastoring a church and being new to it is learning all of your stories. Because although some of you may know each other and may have known each other for a very, very long time, most all of you are new to me. And many of you are new to each other as we have begun to see many new people walk in the door. I'm very excited for that new member class starting next Sunday. I hope you will come and uh, visit with us about those things. Well, many of you know where I have been the last 10 days. If you don't know where I have been the last 10 days, I don't know, Dave, I can't get my clicker to work. Oh, that's where I've been the last 10 days, hiding under the willow tree with this very nice man who I got married to, actually. Can you believe that? We didn't just dress up and look nice. We actually did get married <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think um, here's my favorite picture. You want to slide that forward for me? See, that's my favorite one. That's my own. Um, you see, poor Eric is smiling there, like, what did I just do? This is a. And anybody recognize Phil Strom on the left side of that photo? Phil is a very good friend and also a United Methodist pastor. And that's, of course, my son and my daughter sitting there acting foolish, which should not surprise you in the least. They did not get that from me, by the way. <laughs> that foolish behavior. And then, of course, we had some cleanup to do last Sunday, so sorry we cut church. We did not come and worship with you. And then Monday, we took off and went down to Florida. Anybody ever been to Florida? Well, this is where I've been for the last week. I promise it's relevant. Um, I'm from Florida, actually. I'm from the Tampa area, which is sort of in the middle left side there where that little bumpy is sticking out there. That's where my family lives. They live in Tampa and Bradenton and um, down the coast a little ways in Port Charlotte and that area down there. But we had a specific trajectory for our plan to get to Florida, and that was to fly into Tampa and then it still won't work. Can you press the space bar for me? I don't know why. My clicker's being dumb today. We flew into Tampa, and then we drove through Brandon to pick up my mother, and then we uh, drove down to this little silly area called Lithia. Has anybody ever been to Lithia, Florida? No, I didn't think so, no. All that's down there is a bunch of crocodiles, actually, so, actually alligators, but, <laughs> and my brother. Um, so we drove down to Lithia, Florida, because I needed to connect up with all of these goofy, goofy people who happened to be part of my extended, well, my immediate family. And so you can see Eric and I in the middle, and then just to my left is my nephew, Will, and then to the left of that is my brother Edward and my nephew Jack. And I've lifted up Jack in prayer many times here. Jack is a a beautiful young man who has had multiple surgeries and had another surgery this last Wednesday to correct a back surgery and he just endures tremendous hardship in life and yet maintains a joyful attitude and Jack's mom is on the far right and that's Leslie and my mom is on the far left trying to sneak in the picture there on the side. Um, so I needed to connect up with these people because one-to-one -one contact with Jack is very much needed. Do you know how some people in your world, in your life, you can talk to on the phone or you can text or you can message on Facebook and you feel like you know them, but other people you just need to put your eyeballs on. Do you know people like that in your world? Where everything's different if you see them. Jack is like that not just because it's a little hard for him to communicate. I mean, I talked to him on the phone, but I needed to put my eyeballs on him. I wanted to see him. I wanted to hug him. And because of all of their medical things and surgeries, they were not able to come up for the wedding. So we went to them for the first part of our trip. But then we took off and left them alone with all of the ice cream that we didn't finish eating. And 
and um, went oh wait there's one more picture of Edward and Leslie and Jack just because he's just that sweet um, <laughs> we drove over past Tampa and decided to goof around in um, Dave can you press a button for me press the space bar yep we decided to go hang out in Clearwater anybody ever been to Clearwater Florida Woohoo! Clearwater Florida anybody been there really truly yeah Clearwater, Florida, and we saw all kinds of God's crazy creation. Dave, press the space bar for me. This is a lousy Sunday to have your clicker not working. I'm sorry. Just stay with me. Um, and then we, we really hung out down there for quite a while. Press it again, Dave. And we drove all around the area, and again, go charge, just press it a few times. We went around to Caladesi Island and Honeymoon Island, in case you can't see that. Yeah, and actually, all the squiggly lines are because when we rented the Wave Runners, the guy just like took off like 75 miles an hour, and I decided 65 was fast enough for me, so I kind of got lost, and so that's what all that mess is there. That's a true story, um, although I'm not really sure exactly what path we took. That's where we ended up. We saw all kinds of God's beautiful and amazing creation. We interacted with all kinds of things, little fish, big fish, little tree crabs. Um, press the button for me again. There's four more pictures we want to see. T two, one more. Okay, two more. Three, four, there they are. Stay here for a second. Little big fish, crabs, and tortoises and an opossum hiding out in the trees along with a cat which was super strange we ran into all kinds of mosquitoes let me tell y'all mm, mosquitoes we even saw lizards and bugs you can't imagine all kinds of birds even those ones that dive bomb have you ever seen them they like fly along and they look down and they're scanning and then just wham into the water trying to catch fish and flying around we saw a roseate spoonbill this crazy pink bird with a spoon on the end of its nose. We even saw box rays, manatees, and even got splashed by dolphins out on the water. But there was something else at Clearwater Beach that we even tried to avoid to some extent because we were on our honeymoon, for crying out loud. Can you guess what else we might have seen a lot of at Clearwater Beach? Anybody? Can you guess what we saw a lot of at Clearwater Beach? <laughs> yeah, other people. So click that slide forward for me. I didn't actually take this picture, but because um, I tried not to take pictures of other people because I didn't really want to, sorry. I love people, but, you know, that's not why you go on your honeymoon to hang out with everybody else. But there were so many. And when I think back through the trip, there was, there was a young guy who rented us the kayaks. It took him a while to warm up and start talking about how he's from Alaska. And then there was the homeless person on the bench who had painted a ball just like the Wilson ball from the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks. Anybody see that? He had a ball painted like that. And then there was a server who was practically deliberately lousy at her job, just absolutely terrible as a server, but she took criticism from a grouchy man like a champ. I mean, all these people interactions you could see. And then there was a really rude guy who'd clearly been quite thirsty throughout the day, <laughs> who was just told us he was just about to make fun of us for holding hands. Told us that. We also encountered the Wave Runner leader guy who was crabby with me for falling behind and getting lost. I guess I already mentioned that. Um, but he recommended an awesome little restaurant, his mom's favorite place. And I'm thinking, this guy took his mom to a restaurant. We're trying it. And sure enough, we went there. And then I thought about the server there who met us with ice water because it was 95 and we were foolish and rode our bikes there. Why do you do that, right? And then there was a woman at the table next to us who was looking at something on her phone that compelled her so deeply that she got out her credit card and started donating Maybe it was Caring Bridge or I don't know what it was, a GoFundMe, something. But she was clearly moved by it. We couldn't help but notice, however, that one of the things in particular that we kept encountering on this trip were people in conflict. We saw it everywhere, really, truly in conflict. People arguing, not getting along. 
really unhappy distress with each other. And we took note of how it impacted us on our trip. We were not even involved in their conflict. We didn't get in any fights or anything. We were just around it and heard it. We saw it, it was everywhere, it was happening. In one place, there was a young couple torn over their parting. They were very sad and, no, I wanna leave, no, I don't wanna leave. Looked like maybe a breakup, but sad. And another night, another woman who had clearly been quite thirsty through the day, she, bar- she embarrassed her date so badly that he just got up and left, went away. She chased him in the parking lot, but that was very sad. But what really came up in our conversations was this impact that another couple had. They were arguing with each other very publicly in the, the profanity they used to each other and spoke about each other, the names they called each other. They were married, or they were married to other people and with each other, I don't know. But they were wearing wedding rings. It really had an impact. Isn't it interesting that we didn't even know them, and yet their argument bothered us, and we referenced it for a few days? Can anyone relate to this kind of thing? Yeah, it did. It bothered us. I was embarrassed for them. I was sad for them. I was impacted by their behavior, by their unhappiness. They went on and on. Not only did all of the nature and all of the beauty and all of the opportunity we encountered have an impact on us, but the people definitely did. At the same time, I'm sure we had an impact on people as well. And it's highly possible that we were not aware of most of it. How many people in Clearwater Beach and in Dunedin and on Honeymoon Island and Caladesi Island, weren't many people there, saw two old 50-somethings walking around sunburned holding hands. What impression do you think we left behind us? What do you think people thought? Do you think people thought we were newlyweds at our age? I already got tagged this morning over there where she picked on me for that. (laughs) It's okay. Do you think they thought Wow, maybe they're on a date with someone other than their spouse. That's why they're holding hands. Maybe they thought, do those people know anything about sunscreen? They should learn. (laughs) The answer is yes, we're just from Minnesota, so it doesn't work the same. What essence or tone do you think we left behind? A good example of this is one day we were sitting on the beach and there was a guy walking with his girlfriend and the, the, the fragrance of him, it was, a, it was perfume, or co- it wasn't perfume, cologne, it was just like a cloud. <sighs> I was thinking he's trying to impress her today. What do you think we leave behind when we encounter people, when we see people, when we, when we visit with people, when we talk to them, even when we engage them in line at stores? When we talk to them over counters at doctor's offices, when we order our coffee at the drive-through line, what is the impact that we have on other people? What do you think people thought about us on this trip? If people arguing in public can have such a negative impact on honeymooners, can people who are loving and kind have such a positive impact on others in the same way. Do you think that's possible? Can a positive attitude change a room in the same way that a negative attitude can? Can it? I personally think we have to have 20 positive attitudes to outnumber one negative. Don't you? Well, we better get to work, you guys. Don't you think? What impression do we leave? So I've been thinking about this sermon in particular since before I even started here as your pastor. It came in my mind all spring, and I thought, Kayla, 
This is the Sunday we're doing it. And so I started just rattling off all these ideas about, yeah, 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 this is activity Sunday. I want you to follow me just a little bit on this. Dave, flip that slide for me. Has anybody ever read this book, Harold and the Purple Crayon? Okay, so when I was a little kid, I didn't even necessarily quite understand this concept. And I just figured Harold drug a crayon behind him. But the premise of the story, flip it one more time for me, Dave. The premise of the story is this cute little guy has this purple crayon, and he draws whatever he imagines and makes it real for his imagination. And I love that idea because I'm the imaginative type, if you hadn't noticed. And so he draws pictures, like in one story, of a sailboat, and then he gets on the sailboat. And he sails around the world in his imagination and his stories. So when I was a little kid, I just thought he, draw, he drug a crayon behind him and left a mark everywhere he went and created stories. Either way, this purple crayon story stuck with me for the longest time through my life. And I have thought we all leave a mark everywhere we go. Do we not? Do we? Do you believe me? We do. We want to sneak through this world sometimes unnoticed, but that leaves an impression as well, doesn't it? It does. We all leave a mark in this world. We all do. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, what color are we coloring the people we encounter? Are we drawing beautiful pictures where they can see God's love and grace and joy and peace and, and faithfulness and hope or justice and mercy? Are, are we drawing pictures of Jesus' instructed conflict resolution, of rule of Christ, where we treat each other with respect and love? Are we drawing those pictures publicly? What are people seeing in their interactions with us. See, and I do have to say, we know that sometimes grown-ups and adults and even kids have to draw lines that are boundaries and rules. Do you guys agree with that? That's true, too. But what is our intent? Is our intent to color our world with life-giving beauty? Is that our plan? Are we intending to make beautiful pictures that are inspiring life? I hope so. I want to. Are we drawing pictures? Are we leaving behind a legacy that will draw people to Jesus Christ? If they followed our trail, would they find themselves in the footsteps of Jesus as well? What do you think? Is it possible to do that? I would say yes. Would anybody agree? Yes, it's possible. We are called to be a part of drawing those pictures of the kingdom of God, of leaving behind a legacy that matters for the kingdom of Christ, that draws people to Jesus. And that is not just old people. It is not just young people. It is not just married people. It is every people of every age, kids included. Kids, we're going to do an activity in a minute to help you realize that your impact in this world could be greater than the adults in the room. Really, seriously, we're going to do it in just a minute here. Uh-oh, am I out of time? No, I got 10 minutes. 15 minutes, Kayla, we're on. We got it, okay. Flip that slide for me, Dave. I want you to see this. Look at this. We are God's handiwork. We are made for a purpose, and it is prepared in advance. God already knows who you're going to encounter today. God already knows who you're going to see tomorrow who you're going to see the next day, and he knows exactly what they need from you that will be life-giving for them, what will bring them closer to Jesus. God knows exactly what they need to see in and from you specifically, every single one of you, every one of us, me included. God knows that. It is prepared in advance. I fully believe it. Turn it forward for me one more time. And 1 Corinthians 3.9 talks about this again. You are God's field. You are the place where the harvest can be grown and cultivated. And you are, say those last two words with me, say it, God's, God's building. building. 
Okay, I want you to think about what you just said. You are what? Say it again. God's building. So who is the church? Yeah. This building is just a building. You are God's church. You follow me? You are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the impact? So flip it forward for me. Let's think about our potential here. Let's think about it. I want you to think. I showed you where I went all this last week. I went to lengths to describe for you where I've been for the last week. Now I want you to think about where you've been for the last week. Think about it. You see this map? See that little blue dot over there above Albertville? That's where I live. I couldn't get it off the map. I'm sorry, but that's where I live. (laughs) And that red dot in the middle is right where we are all here right now. Right here in the middle. Kayla, where did you come from this morning? Somewhere up, up that way? Lane. Blaine is where you came from? Okay, so Kayla drove from Blaine. If you were to draw a purple line around that map of where you normally go, would any of you have to go off the map for every day? I know a couple of you work way out in the boondocks somewhere else, yeah? Would anybody have to draw off the map for a normal day? Yes, I know. (laughs) But most of us could probably draw a normal day within that map. Most of us here, would you agree with that? In fact, most of us could probably draw our normal day within this map. You see this big giant map back here? Here's Coon Rapids, Brooklyn Center. A lot of us probably could draw our normal day within this map right here. So I want you to think of a typical day in your life, okay? Think about one particular day. So Kayla and I have fairly similar typical days. A lot of our purple lines come through this place because guess what? We work here. Imagine that. We come here a lot, don't we? Yes. Yes, we do. Come up here. You're going to need to help me. Okay. So we're going to do something today to actually calculate our potential impact on the community for one day. For one day. So think of a typical day for you. Kids, this includes you. Think of where you go, where you go to school. Do you go to a practice of some kind? Do you go to work? Do you ride a school bus? Do you go to daycare? Think of a typical day in your life. And you're going to need your parents to help you with this or whoever you're with to help you maybe to do this. And we're going to be drawing on maps, right? Yeah, I'll hand you this. We're going to... You got that? Yeah, we're going to be drawing on maps. In just a minute, you're going to get a map. And when you get this map, there is a sticker attached to it. And I'll tell you what you're going to do with that next. This, we're really going to calculate our impact. We really want to encourage you to do this. Every age, every person, right? Everyone in the room. There's, there's enough. There's enough, yeah. So everybody will have a map, and everybody will need to choose a crayon. And choose a crayon that suits you. Some crayons are broken. Some are brand new. Kayla said some crayons were kind of chubby. And I said, we're not going to talk about that, Kayla. Jeez. (laughs) So (laughs) broken crayons still color. Amen? Do you hear me? I'm a broken crayon. And I guarantee you I color. I like coloring. Um, So you're going to need to choose a crayon. Some of you have already started picking up the baskets right on the center aisle down in the middle. So grab one. Kathy, grab that basket under you. But... So the baskets are only in the middle aisle. Once you're done in the middle section, pass it to the end of the pew on the outer sections for us. So Every age one. needs this. Every age. Every person needs a map and a crayon and a sticker. On the back wall, though, Dana, you have your own basket. And Susie, that, Sarah, that row has their own basket. And these back two rows have their own basket. Okay, so while you're doing this, listen, because I know you can multitask. You want to draw a dot about where your day starts and then draw a pattern of where you go, like on the bus, the school bus, drive to work, stay home. If you stay home on Mondays completely, don't pick Monday. Pick a day you go somewhere, okay? (laughs) That'd be better. (laughs) And then, everybody listening? (whistles) Kayla said it was a mistake to start passing out the maps before I told you what to do. They did it on their own. Uh, no, listen. Everybody listening? So start calculating by guess. Now, if you're a kid who rides a school bus, you can't have an exact number, 
right? Or if you ride a city bus, you can't have an exact number. Start calculating by guess the number of people you encounter on each of those journeys or stops through a day. Now, if you're a kid in high school, you could literally encounter hundreds of people every single day. Yeah, calculate it. Add it up as best as you can. I'm serious, do it, because we're going to find out the kids have more impact in this community probably than many adults. You matter in the kingdom of God more than you realize. Our kids are in a mission field every day, every single day. We need to be praying them up and empowering. Calculate, draw your map. We want your maps and we want your stickers. So calculate, parents help kids or other grown-ups help kids. Calculate a guess of the number of people that you think you could encounter in a day. And that total goes on the dot. The grand, and that total, the grand, total, the grand total of a typical day of people you encounter goes on the orange dot. Just the number on the dot. Now, if you work at some place like Target, it could also be hundreds of people, right? You agree? If you're a school teacher, Lord help you anyway. Um, that could be a lot of people as well. Children are people. Count them. <laughs> I see laughter. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this with you. Are you going to count how many? All right, well, I start over. I start with, well, I'm not even on the map here. Cool. I yeah, start there's going to be some people that aren't on the map. Just you have to guess kind of where you start, line. and I typically drive. Where do you go? You come down here? Well, from Blaine, I usually come over to church. Yep, but I go I might, here. I might stop at Super America, and I probably... At oh, at least, the grocery store. At least two or three people. Yep. There. I, if I go to the grocery store, I probably encounter, what, 20 people, 30 people? Seriously, add it up. Add your number up. Add up how many people you could possibly encounter in a day. And write it on that orange sticker. And then we're going to have you do something with that sticker, okay? And we're going to calculate all of our values on our orange sticker and find out how many people we could encounter in one day when we're not here. Do you follow me? We're talking about what it means to be the church when we're not here, what we're doing, how many opportunities we have out there. So I think I probably... I'm picking a Wednesday. You're picking a Wednesday? Yeah. Good call. Well, let's see. I don't count that many. I need to get out more, Kayla. Well, it depends on what we do. If we do something fun, there might be... If you're here Wednesday night. Oh, I'm here Wednesday night. Okay. In a typical day, I'm going to guess... I don't know. How many? I'm putting 100 for Wednesday. For Wednesday? From Wednesday okay. morning to past till it's all done Wednesday night. Okay. I probably encounter 100 people. That's how many numbers are we getting? Are we getting anybody over 25? Anybody over 100? Anybody over 200? Look at all the kids, you guys. All the kids, teachers and kids. Anybody over 300? Yep, some of you. Healthcare workers, if you work in a hospital, you encounter hundreds of people every day, agreed? Some of them, you, you might even have conversations with all of them. Look at your impact, look at our potential. Do you realize what we could do with that many encounters with people. Huge numbers. Put your numbers on your orange That's sticker. Right. We want your sticker on this map. We're going to put your sticker. You there need you to go. come forward or give it to someone else if you're not comfortable coming up steps. And have them come forward and put your sticker on your map. You and live. Becky Borman is super good at math, and she's going to add up all of our stickers. And you're putting a sticker where you live. Yeah, put your sticker where you live or about there or at the closest edge of the map. So if you've got your calculation on your sticker, bring it forward and stick it on the map. Or give it to someone else who can't. Where you live, yep. Sticker, sticker where you live. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see your numbers.
put your camera on there for me. I want to take pictures of this. <laughs> I just got checked by a little guy. I'm going to say something else. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So you know what? We're only considering our physical proximity. So if you're somebody who doesn't interact with a lot of people, but you're on Facebook all day, write that number on the sticker. <laughs> but we're only talking about the looking at interactions. Remember me saying I put my eyeballs on you? People you actually talk to. Yeah, people you encounter. The looking at. The eyeballs. The eyeballs on. You see all this mess up here? Can you imagine what we could do? Woohoo! Yeah, stick your sticker wherever, wherever you go most, maybe. Wow, okay, don't overlap your stickers, we gotta see the number. <laughs> Did anybody count their visits to the YMCA? What number is on that? Yeah? <laughs> 40? That sounds like a good number. Way to go, add it up. <laughs> Take note, grown ups. The kids have massive potential impact in the community, do they not? They do. We need to pray for our kids every morning when they go to school. Even if you don't even know their names yet, pray for them every single time. <laughs> oh, Becky. <laughs> Becky's gonna try to do the math on this. We could have a contest. Should have a contest? Want to her if you <laughs> so while they're continuing to stick their stickers down, I want to talk about another thing regarding your impact. Okay. So while you're thinking about your impact in this world, there's one thing I do want to address that I want you to really think about is your online impact. Does anyone want to hear what I think about online impact? Okay. So even in the last week, coming back and looking at the news and seeing what's occurred in the news and all the rhetoric and all the noise and all the language, I think it's very, very important for disciples of Jesus to consider our online impact. What are we saying to one another online? What are we doing online? It's a lot easier to damage people when you're not physically in their presence. Would you agree? Yes, it is. So I would say there's a good guideline you can follow with this. Ask yourself the question, what is life giving? What will offer life? What will bring life to this? What will bring resolution? What can bring hope? what can bring joy. And sometimes Very justice incredible. requires some strong things, is right there. but what will bring life-giving love to the circumstance? Think about your online impact as well. What legacy do we leave? What footsteps will people be following if they step behind us in ours? Are we following after Jesus so closely that everyone we encounter catches something of his spirit when we're there. I want that in my life. Do you want that in yours? Do you want people to know Jesus better just for having been somewhere near you? I do. I believe our kids are huge in this. Our youth are huge. They have so much opportunity, so much.
So we're going to let Becky calculate this while we, while we pray together for a moment. And we're going to sing a closing song today. But I would like to ask you, please, to pray with me. Please pray with me. You're okay. You can keep walking while we're praying. Gracious God, you know exactly who we're going to see this week. You already know the paths we're going to take. You know the roads. You know the stores. You know the businesses. You know the bus. You know the classroom. You know the hallways at school, at work. You know the doctor's office. You know exactly who we're going to see this week. And Lord, we believe that you are setting opportunities to be life-giving love to people everywhere we go. Lord, let our impact be you. Let our impact in this world be life-giving love and mercy every moment of our days. Let us just emanate your light and your peace. Lord, be with our kids. All these young people who walk into schools, Lord, they deal with so much in those places. It's so hard to be a middle schooler. Lord, bless them in those places. Bless them in every space they walk into, every relationship, every day in the lunchroom, Lord. Bless them with your spirit and your peace and your power. Bless all of our students, Lord, all of our kids, all of our young adults, all of our adults, all of our older adults in every walk of life, Lord. We believe you have called us to make a difference for you. So, Lord, show us how to do that and lead us in those ways. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand for our closing song today? Keeping the Quran as a reminder. We will, Did you yeah. you mention that? Well, keeping the Quran.
Okay, so do you still have your crayon? Where is it? So you take this crayon with you. Don't leave it in your pocket, because it'll make a mess in the laundry, let me tell you. Take this crayon with you. If you didn't grab one before, take one when you, when you go. She's loose! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Just keep on running, man. <laughs> Take this crayon with you. It reminds you that you have an impact. No matter what, you have an impact. You do. And your impact matters no matter how old you are, young, old. If you're walking on this earth, your impact still matters. You want to guess what our number is of one day? 10,000, is that your guess? How many more? This is one day of estimating how many people, and some of you didn't bring your stickers up. That's okay. That's all right. You, you just know you have an addition to this. And this is only looking at people. This is not online influence, which would be much higher, probably double. We got two. What we could see and didn't overlap, 25,785. Hey guys, that's one day. Can you imagine what God could do with that? With you, with us, together. Let's work on this. Would you extend your hand? We're gonna pray over this map. Please pray with me. God, we believe you have called Coon Rapids United Methodist Church to be in Coon Rapids. You have called us to this community, and we can see, Lord, we humbly see that you give us the opportunity to impact more than 25,000 people every single day. Lord, empower this. Come around this, under this, beside this, through this. Go before us so that we can do what you call us to do in this community in every way. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Amen.